Welcome in to the CHGO Blackhawks post-game podcast. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We've got Greg Bryce with us here, too. Hanging out, spinning a dial, and yelling about stuff that I don't know. What were you yelling about tonight? Was it uh, basketball? No, sir. I was yelling about... Yeah, it was basketball, but just <laughs> making a link for a show I'm doing. Tomorrow. Oh, that too. Fair enough. Fair producing. Enough. Yelling about producing. That's... Uh, you know what? I've been there. Uh, Hawks lose 6-2 to the LA Kings, and uh, Mario, as we sort of discussed in the pregame show, one of those uh, bad matchups for the Blackhawks. The Kings and uh, are, uh, the Kings have a big advantage over the Hawks, and the Hawks gave it all they had and came up four goals short. Yeah, I mean, at least they scored this time, twice. So, yeah. A little bit of an improvement over uh, the last time they played them a couple of days ago. Um, but yeah, it's... The Kings, you look at all their goals tonight, uh, a majority of them, at least, what, four, were right, coming right around the net with uh, either redirections or backdoor tap-ins, like, welcome to Blackhawks hockey. Um, and it's just, you know, there was a defensive pairing tonight for the Blackhawks that was just eaten alive. Um, <laughs> and and I think the, the physical advantage that the Kings have over yeah if you see our blue lines here you can just you don't even have to see, see that big big <laughs> giant line going to uh your left our yeah. right that's bad <laughs> you don't want it going that way yeah especially that far <laughs> yeah uh for the youtube viewers so yeah i mean it's just this is a king's team that is built uh differently than this current iteration of the blackhawks team and they had the advantage and, and they exploited it yes all right. Okay. Simple good as night, that. Everybody. All right. Good night. Talk that's, to you tomorrow. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between this game and the last game. It was a little closer early. Yeah. I mean, the last when, yeah, when these yeah. two got here together was it Friday last week? Yes. I mean, it was like four nothing nine minutes into the game and it was over. At least, you know, it was tied going into the first second yeah. or the second intermission or second period. Blackhawk get a five on three goal. Nick Felino with the uh, Artem Anisimov special. Stand in front of that. Let puck hit you. Score power play goal. Hey, good approach. Uh, they, they were teammates in Columbus. That I'm works. sure he taught him that move. <laughs> um, and he used it to his ability tonight. Uh, but yeah, the Kings just, they pushed the Blackhawks around all night. They did that Friday night. Mm. Really, really, really bad night for Kevin Korchinski and Jacob Oof. Megna. Despite yeah. the goal. Uh, the goal. Right. Two, hey, but two goals. And ba- like We got the good, the bad, and the ugly from yeah. Korchinski tonight. Hey, we scored. got the full the full spectrum the, full of Korch. all that. Yeah, we got it all. He went full Korchinski tonight. Um, I, While some of the defensive stuff is, is discouraging at times, he's 19. And as you rightfully pointed out towards the end of the game, he's not going to be paired with Jacob Megna his whole career. At least he better not fucking be like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. Fair point. Um, you know, so there's some some really good young defensive defensemen in the system he could be paired with. Mm-hmm. Maybe they draft a really talented young right-handed shot defenseman second overall. Potentially. And there's your pairing for Oof, the next Bedard 15. the defense. <laughs> he's too sure. small. He well, doesn't, he, he's got to get bigger well, so we can hit guys. <laughs> with that plus minus, you don't want him on this defense. Yeah. Adam Hogue in the chat. Whoa, hey. look out. Descending from on high to join the Blackhawks show. Uh, terrible job by me not getting to LA in time for the Hawks game tonight. On the other hand, probably better I missed it. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. if you yeah. were there, Adam, we would have blamed you. Yeah. Right. Well, if you would have gone I mean, to the game about midway through the 
second period, you would have been able to go right down to the glass. You said it. <laughs> those you said those it wrong, seats though. emptied real fast out there in LA. You, you said it. You pronounced it wrong. LA. 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 Have fun in LA. Well, LA. Adam, Adam can report to Caleb Williams tomorrow at his pro day, which is why Adam's in LA to cover Caleb Williams' pro day. Different show, man. Different show. Oh, is that happening? Octa- well, Octavius in the chat is blaming oh. tonight's loss on Caleb Williams. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. okay. The, the pressure is on. They're just That's they're true. just preparing themselves for Sundays this fall. That's all. I'm afraid <laughs> of success. You know, if Justin Fields was still the Bears quarterback, Blackhawks would have won this game. Yeah. Well, well they lost 5 nothing when he was. Hey, the Penguins won <laughs> as soon as Justin Fields showed into town. Just saying. There we go. Uh, all right. We got to have you vote for the four-star. Here are the three stars. Gavrikov, Kempe, Kopitar. Who cares? Never heard of them. Uh, so your four-star nominees, Philip Kurashev, two assists, a shot on goal, three shot attempts. Nick Foligno, CHGO zone, one goal, a shot. That's 100% shooting. Three shot attempts. No, it's not. He should have shot more. And a hit. And he Seth Jones with an assist. Time, yeah. That assist was the 400th point of Seth Jones's career. Congrats. He had five shots on goal, eight shot attempts, and played uh, a very low 25-31 mm. in this game. So those are your nominees. Uh, we did not throw Connor Bedard in there because every time we do, he wins. Despite sometimes not deserving it, and we could probably get into that a little bit because nine shot attempts, uh, only one on goal, mm-hmm. and yeah, he is going that. to have nightmares about that wide open net. Yes, for the rest of his life. Well, until he buries one, and then gets that memory. I don't know. Out that, of there. That's the kind of thing that he probably has dreams about goals like that anyway. Because all he does is eat, sleep, and drink hockey. Mm-hmm. And he strikes me as the kind of guy who will obsess over the one he missed versus the 50 he scored. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, that is that is one that, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say it could have changed the trajectory of the game, but getting out to the uh, opening lead might have done a little bit different uh, in this one for the, for, for the Blackhawks. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's that's one that you just you he he will never miss that shot again in his life. Like he is going to, uh, like you said, think about that one, and it, uh, he's going to be working on empty net from that spot. He's going to be he's going to say, "Put the puck here. I'm going to be moving to my right, and I want to shoot from <laughs> shoot going left, and I'm going to hit that net every single time." Um, yeah, that's just that's just a tough one. I mean, he was out there, would you say nine shot attempts he finished with? Yeah. I mean, he's again, this is a very very common for him to to have that kind of night firing the puck, trying to get scoring attempts, but just one out of nine hitting the net. That's very uncommon. Uh just to say, uh just to I I, I usually don't like to address the trolls, but I'm going to when it's this easy. Uh somebody saying Seth Jones was horrible defensive tonight. Uh, I don't know what game you're watching. Uh, in 1955 of five-on-five five ice time, he was on the ice for 16 shots, four versus 12 against. That's that's good. And was not on the ice for a single goal against. So, again, watch the fucking game. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Have a, yeah. Look beyond, like, whatever's trending on, or whatever the little fancy graphics are showing you. The same fancy graphics that showed you that, J- that uh, Jared Tornity was the best hawk in the Sharks win. Come on, let's uh, let's use our eyes now and again. Are you are you denying that which gave you your win tonight? Uh, well, you know it's the only system we have. <laughs> you guys came up with the scoring <laughs> flawed system. You guys came up with the scoring it's system because I just system. don't math. I just I was in mm-hmm. my contract. Mm-hmm. I don't math, so uh, don't worry. The new and improved eighty-four page r- rule book is <laughs> being approved. Boom! Just yes. like so like big it's cloud good. of dust comes up as you slam it on the table. Yes. The book, I mean. It's going to be like, uh, yeah. I have all uh, summer to read through it. It's going to be like one of the books that like Gandalf reads through in Lord of the Rings. It's, <laughs> it's going to be quite the thing. Yes. Uh, someone just said Megan is a dumpster fire. I'm sorry Megan? to hear about that, Megan. Sorry, Megan. Um, <laughs> that's my cousin, <laughs> That's man. Merrick. Me, I know, uh, he, I know yeah, they meant Megna. Yeah. My, my but, uh, phone <laughs> autocorrects Megna. Yeah. Poor Megan. <laughs> There's not, her, not many games says, There's not many I'm games sure there is a Megan Megan is filling Megan's a roster just spot. filling a roster spot. <laughs> I'm sure there is a Megan out there that is a dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I know a couple. <laughs> yeah, I went mean. to grade school with a few. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll, at yeah. this point, I'll take Megan over Megna. I'm good. Yeah. I've seen enough of number 24, and Bob Probert is rolling in his grave watching that guy wear that number. Doug Wilson. So is Doug Wilson, but he's yeah. not dead. 
so he can't roll in his grave yet. Martin Havlat. Yeah. Watching watching Jacob Magnum wear twenty four makes Doug Wilson's hair get messy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. so, that's doing something. Yeah. Hey, by the yeah. way, do us a favor. Uh, smash that like button for us. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page as well. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you. We appreciate you. Make sure you are following or subscribed, and uh, leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I think the guy Greg told to f off probably won't, but it was deserved. Because like, aren't we beyond? No, aren't we beyond? The, like, come on. How many? How many more years on his contract? I, I've said this to you guys privately. That. I don't think I've said it on the show, but I think we've gotten to the point now where I can say it on the show. The Seth Jones. If you come at me with Seth Jones sucks, it is my litmus test for you don't know anything about hockey. Yeah, that's it. Like, you can say he had a bad game, or that turnover was bad, or he made a bad read, or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you if you just flat out are a Seth Jones sucks truther or whatever you want to call it, I your your opinion means nothing to me because it means you're not watching the game with any sort of. You've you've dug your heels into an opinion that right. is unchangeable in your eyes. And right. we we've been accused of being the the there it is. There's your your comment from whatever. His defense was awful. Okay. okay. Um. Uh, we've know. been accused of being like the Seth Jones PR department, and but we will criticize him when he has we has have. bad bad. And he's games. had some. Yeah, he's had, some he's bad had, games, he's no had, had stinky games. Yeah, he's had bad games, and when and we and we when uh, you know when he has bad games, we call him out on it. The the Columbus game was probably his worst game as a Blackhawk, and mm-hmm. we sat here and said it. But like when when there's uh, <laughs> when you when you criticize him when it's valid, we'll be there with you. But when you just say it because that's your that's your narrative. Or you looked up from your phone for a shift and saw a bad play. Yeah, like, right. come on. It's it's uh, it's just silly. Yeah, it is silly. It's, uh, it's a little bit preposterous, but maybe in two or three years we'll get past it. I don't know. No. Uh, uh, Region Rev says, any updates on Blackwell? I was just about to say that. Uh, there is no update on Callum Blackwell uh, postgame. Scott Powers and Ben Pope both in LI uh, tweeting yeah. about it uh, postgame. So... I don't know. That was a weird play. I couldn't tell if the button of a stick on him and then no, the reversal. I think took it was out. Just he got a, a butt in the face. Butt of the got face. Yeah. Ass face. Well, day to day with same. ass face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hope he's thing. all right because I mean that's a dude who's been through a ton and mm-hmm. like, you know, he is what he is. But since his return, you, it's been a different team. Well, you want him in the lineup? Absolutely. Yeah. No update is a good thing because Luke Richardson has had really bad run of diagnosing injuries this year. So yeah, maybe not yeah. saying anything is a good thing. Yeah, if there's no update, usually uh, that means that there's further if, there, if there's no discussion doing. about it, that means there's nothing to worry about. If there's no update, that means, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it through the night and see what happens in the morning, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a tough, uh, tough hit, tough angle to, to get hit at and yeah, hopefully Blackwell is all right. Just because um, he has been, he's he's one of those guys that like is like part of the glue to this to this lineup and this roster. The way that he plays, his his presence in the locker room, like it it has made a difference since he uh, got back with the team uh, earlier this year. And yeah, he's one of those guys where I I I wouldn't want to take him out uh, for any for any other reason other than if he was injured. But hopefully he's not. It's crazy to think of, you know, a guy who we spent much of last year and, and early this year kind of making a punchline out of has become a guy that has been a little irreplaceable, irreplaceable on this team. And look like, yeah, yeah, he had a hat trick the other night, but it's not a guy you really count on for offense. But like we talked about pregame again, Mario, like when Athens C and Reich will come back, it puts everybody in a right in a rightful place mm-hmm. or at least a better place. Blackwell's kind of the same deal. And yeah. every player on this team has talked about, you know, his emotional impact. You know, he's vocal on the bench. He's like having another coach on the bench, mm-hmm. all those sort of things. So to lose him, it's not just losing a guy who's going to finish checks and score every now and again. There's a lot more to losing uh, Callum Blackwell than just that. We got to take our first break. Uh, when we come back, 
we got more. We'll get to some of your comments and uh, take take a look at some of the other numbers in this game. But first, Mario is going to tell you about Circa. Yeah, Circa. Uh, not wonderful on the old Circa Sportsbook uh, app tonight for myself. But, hey, there's always tomorrow, right? Circa Sportsbook, they are the best sportsbook around with their tight money line splits, low hold models, uh, and all the good stuff that the Circa Sports app has to offer. They strive to keep games at a minus 110 split, unlike other sportsbooks, which may have the same game at a minus 115 or minus 120 split. And that is because Circa keeps as little money as possible on large market bets compared to other books. And with Circa Sports, they do not limit players based on their winnings. I didn't have to worry about that tonight, but every player has the same limits, unlike other books who do limit the winning players. Circa encourages you to take all the money you can from them. Download <laughs> all of the sports book apps at Compare Lines, and you're going to see that you're always going to get the best ones from Circa. And they have unmatched customer service because there are real people behind the Circa Sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion. Unlike those other books who use chatbots, Ooh. Ooh. all aspects of the app are being run by the same team that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So you, what you want to do is download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois dash app and sign up today. Also, be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. We have a Circa event coming up on Thursday a live Bears uh, podcast, CHGO Bears podcast, and the College Hoops Watch Party uh, with many CHGO uh, personalities, friends, and uh, all the good people there. Uh, so check that out Thursday starting at 9.30. Do we have – what's the exact location of that? Waukegan, Illinois. Somewhere in Waukegan. <laughs> Waukegan, Illinois. The Circa Sportsbook it's in Waukegan, giant building Illinois. with all the lights in Waukegan. Yes. There you go. All right. And You'll we'll, be able to find it. Yep. Yes. 930 Bears, and then afterwards, a college basketball special, and then Oops. a bunch of drinks, a bunch of betting, a bunch of basketball. 4011 Fountain Square Place in Waukegan. There you That's go. That's the one. Go to that building yes. and look it's for the, the, building look on for the Fountain CHGO. Square place. I guarantee yes. it. Look for the CHGO people. Yes. Uh, and, yes, if you or someone you know may have a – problem with gambling call 1-800-GAMBLER or text GAMB to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com all righty well moving from sports books to automobiles the best offers of the year are going on right now during the March Radness sales event make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings, one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, and so you'll ready. always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest uh, Chevy inventories. They have the perfect tailgate vehicles during truck month. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 of them available. They have 125 vehicles priced under Twenty thousand dollars. Seriously, guys, Pretty good. pricing cannot get more affordable than it is right now. And what's more affordable than free? Nothing is, and that's what you're going to get this month at Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. A free oil change. All you need to do is mention CHO when scheduling your oil change. Start your spring off right and schedule it by April first. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. So I'm looking here at the uh, fancy stats, as we call them. Mm. Despite the 6-2 final score, the Hawks had 11 players uh, 50% or higher in possession. Huh? Your two leaders both tied with 22 shot attempts for and 10 against Connor Bedard and Philip Kurashev. That's a good line. Yeah, I mean, they were I mean, they were pretty active. Those are the guys, who, like, earlier in the season... You would see them getting pinned deep and the team and just chasing and chasing and chasing. Mm -hmm. I heard Luke said it pregame, uh, and it's been kind of echoed over the last few weeks that like Bedard is really starting to realize that solid defense leads to offense, mm -hmm. and he's going to get more opportunities to score and make nine shot attempts by retrieving a puck, <laughs> taking it away, and bringing it the other way for a scoring attempt. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but Seemingly, when he got back from the injury, he sort of realized that. And I don't know if it was looking at the game from on on high or 
just sort of realizing like, Hey, I'm not just, it's not just going to come to me all the time anymore. Um, he has really turned it around and look, he's, he's no one's like Hope Pitar, Philip to know. I don't know if he ever will be, but as we say all the time, if there's something that he's not good at, he's going to work his ass off to improve it. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, with missing the empty net, he's going to work on that shot 7,000 times <laughs> between now and Thursday. Uh, Blackhawks, 61 shot attempts tonight. Yeah. To 43 to the Kings. That's yeah. crazy. But here's the difference. Yeah. The Kings had 32, no, no, what, wrong column, 21 blocked shots. Still, it's 21 blocked shots. Still a lot, yeah. Well, the Blackhawks had just nine. You know, I'd like to ask, uh, maybe this is for Luke, or maybe next time we have Nick Felino in here, we can ask him, like, is there is that many block shots an indication of anything? Does it mean you're not taking shots from good angles? Does it mean you're just throwing the puck at the net? Or is it just the fact that LA is willing, LA is willing to get in front of the puck? Maybe it's a combination of the two. Yeah. But, like, are there games where the Avalanche or Maple Leafs or whoever have... 21 shots blocked against them. Sure, maybe when they have 40 or 50 shots mm -hmm. and 80 shot yeah, attempts. It doesn't it seems like that's probably like half the Kings getting in the lanes, but yeah. also half the Blackhawks just kind of turning around and shooting it. Like is like, getting a, is getting a shot through a skill. Yeah, of course. Like you ever hear like but when we when we hear players being scouted have you ever heard a coach say, like, oh, yeah, he's got a big, heavy shot, he's grinding a four-check, and he's really good at getting his shot through? Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, Duncan Keith wasn't very good at getting his shot through. <laughs> well, he's good at getting his slap pass through to nobody. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. I, I I think there's there's definitely something to be said for being able to get your shot into a lane that may not be there. Uh, we talk about Connor Bedard being able to change the angle of his shot where yeah. he, you know, can either extend it and even just, a, you know, an inch or two, one or way or the other, pulling it in or, or extending it out and getting a shot off, that can completely change the angle of which which way the puck is going. So I think there there is something to guys being able to find lanes that aren't necessarily there as they're winding up to take a shot. Um, and then, yeah, it – positioning by by the kings and and, and by the defense like uh, there there's there's scouting that goes into that where certain players take shots from frequencies of, of things like that knowing where uh you know if, if if you see them cycle like low to high d to d okay as soon as it gets to seth jones he's letting it go so i need to be in the lane because i know this shot is coming and then you you block the shot, and it's it's good positioning, it's good scouting. I, I think there's a lot that goes into that. It's and then yeah, sometimes you just have a bad shot, and it just hits a guy right in the butt. Yeah. Uh, circle back on Kershev real quick. I had to uh, listen to the first period in the car on the way down, and a friend of the show, our buddy, super substitute host Joe Brand, uh, was doing color as uh, Darren Pang is uh, out watching better hockey somewhere um <laughs> what how could he <laughs> uh but there was a play in the first period where Kurashev had the puck entry and then drove to the net to make a play and joe brand was quick to point out it was like that's the development of philip Kurashev, even within this season where earlier in this year he said he got into the zone and he had counter bedard behind him and tyler johnson was just a little bit further behind Bedard were earlier this season, even this season, let alone last season, he would slow up and look to defer to one of those two guys. Now he's realizing he has the speed and the skill to just go ahead yeah. and make the play. Yeah, and that's I, I'm I'm happy to see that out of a guy like Kurashev, and I think we're seeing that out of some of these younger guys as this season has gone on. The ability to be like, no, 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 I can create something. I can take you know the puck to the net or be right. the one to to drive that's, play. You don't have to be like oh well you know i'm still just the young guy like go assert yourself that's a play w that i hope luke richardson is then now showing hey lucas mm -hmm. see that definitely that's what we want uh kurisha by the way picked up his 29th and 30th assists of the season 44 points in 62 games for him he is year. a dude great that's year. a dude it's great year. hey and you know what he is the first 
and far from the last player that is going to be elevated by being on a line with Connor Bedard oh, for an extended period of time. That's 100%. what the great players do. They are, they make the players around them even better. It's no surprise that Kuroshev is having a career season playing with 98. Mm-hmm. I uh, just saw a note come through on uh, Kevin Korchinski. This yeah, is a this quote. Is, this is quite the quote. Uh, from Ben Pope, Luke Richardson on Kevin Korchinski. Quote, Kevin is the greatest kid in the world. He's a really nice kid. He's got to get a little bit of an edge that he's not letting anybody into that crease. They've got to go all the way around him the long way. That allows him to get on the right side to get under sticks so there's no tip goals and rebound goals. That's it. Yeah. I mean, and he's also just honestly, like, he's got to get bigger and stronger. Yeah. He is a string bean. He is not, you know, even when people talk about how small Connor Bedard is, when you see Connor Bedard in person, he's thick. Mm. He is stocky. He is, like, big legs, big arms, big shoulders. Korchinski and Reichel are little skinny dudes. Slender. Like, yeah. they, they got to add some muscle and some size to play in the NHL. And, look, he's 19. It's going to come. Yeah. It's going to come. But I do think... Willingness to engage is a thing, too. And when you look at a guy with Korchinski's skill set, who has always been offensive-minded, has put up huge numbers at every level he's ever played, he hasn't really had to worry about the defensive thing because he was skilled enough and fast enough to make up for it. At this level, he's got to get mean. And it doesn't mean drop the gloves. It doesn't mean no. put guys through the glass. It just means... If you're in the crease and there's a forward there, get rid of him. Yeah, well, I mean, what was it the the last goal that uh, was given up coming right after he scored? Yeah, it was uh, the either screen or deflection, and the the Kings player just came right from behind K- Korchinski right into the front, and then boom, puck goes right through, and it's it, there was no engagement. Yeah, it was, uh, Trevor Lewis, Trevor Lewis, yeah, yep. there was no engagement from My Korchinski on the play, and it's just like. It's that's that's a lesson to be learned, teachable moment of awareness yeah. and being having the mindset of like when you're in that net front, like you have to every, every time an opponent comes into that area, like it has to be a battle. It can't just be passive. It, I know Luke talks a lot about, you know, tying up sticks and making sure the stick's not available. Sometimes you have to do that and get your body involved as well. Yep. So I, I Korchinski is going to learn that. Uh, like you said, he's going to physically mature still. Like he's not a fully grown man yet, uh, but he's on his way there. And yeah, hit 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 the gym, eat your vitamins, say your prayers. Yeah. You'll he, you'll be good. And he's going to learn. Even if he doesn't become the biggest guy, he'll have to learn better positioning. Yeah. And we saw that on that last goal. Yeah. Where it was just like you can't tie up a guy's stick if your back is turned to him, mm-hmm. and you don't know that he's coming until he goes by you, and you just you know, give right. him a little sh- shove on right. the way by as he goes to the front of that. We've seen that a lot this year. We've seen him kind of get turned the wrong way. That's all awareness and all that stuff is going to get better with more reps. Mm-hmm. And it's also going to get better with a better defensive partner. Unfortunately, right. you know, sure. when he was able to make, if he was making some of those mistakes with, with Connor Murphy, Murphy would be yeah. able to help, but it doesn't help. When it's Jacob Megna, who also is turned the wrong it's way right, and has no right. freaking clue what's going on or is chasing a hit up by the blue line. Like, these mistakes get magnified because both of them are making at the same mm, time. Right, yeah. Where if you have Korchinski making a bad read, it feeds into Connor Murphy, who's usually exactly where he's supposed to be and has the experience and the awareness to pick it, pick up, pick up the young rookie. So, you know, it's, it's, and and like, I don't think anybody sitting here is worried about, uh, no, these are, these are things we expected from a 19 year old defenseman. You're going to have nights like this, you know, and things when you're at that age and things go wrong defensively, they start to snowball real quick. You start to panic. You start to think too much out there and a hockey player who is thinking too much, Pucks get behind them real yeah. quick. Yeah, you just got to be instinctual. Slow. You've just got to f- just make the play. Um, the encouraging thing was back to back games with a goal. It's though it's the goal scoring is why he was drafted seventh overall. Mm-hmm. You traded Alex to essentially to get Kevin Korchinski. You didn't do it because of 
to clear guys out of the crease. Yes, you want him to do that. Yeah, but that's why he wasn't. That's not why he was the seventh overall pick. Yeah. It was shooting and scoring on a regular basis. Right. Well, and, and like the physical side of things, like look at Duncan Keith when he first got into the league. He was not an imposing player, no. and while he was never the biggest defenseman, by the time he reached his you know prime in those early 2010s. <laughs> He was not a guy that was getting physically outmatched no, by most shredded. opponents. Yeah. yeah, he was strong. He learned about leverage. He learned about positioning. Yeah, mm-hmm. like if I've got to take on a bigger guy, I got to get lower than him. I got to push him here, push him there. Yeah. These are all things he will learn throughout the years. And like overall, a very good rookie season. I think we can work with him to bulk him up. I think yes. we can call in I've our got the uh, our supplier. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Good. Good source of protein. We're going to give out a a phone call to Woodridge, Illinois. Hello. To our guy, <laughs> Charlie, the bacon guy, who makes craft bacon and bacon jams in over thirty five different flavors. Woo. They're naturally cured, preservative free products. There aren't any of those funky, uh, weird pronunciation ingredients mm. involved in the process like you get in most of that. Zap bad store good. bought bacon. I saw a uh, Hormel bacon commercial today for quote microwave ready bacon. <laughs> Eat crap. Go away. <laughs> you literally this <laughs> off. You would be doing. <laughs> Get out of here. I mean, I'm sure it's Steven's favorite bacon, <laughs> but not with Charlie. It's vacuum sealed. It freezes perfectly. Bacon lasts in the package up to sixty days in the fridge. One week after the seal is broken and nine months in the freezer, bacon jam lasts about 90 days in the fridge and up to one year in the freezer. But if you're keeping bacon in the freezer that long, there's something wrong with you. Bacon <laughs> jam goes perfectly on anything. What's bacon jam, you ask? It's spreadable bacon. Yep. And it's delicious. Yep. You can put it on your eggs, your toast, your cinnamon rolls. I put it on my shoes. You could, I'd eat a shoe you with could. some bacon jam on it. Crackers, burgers, grilled cheese, anything you want including just the spoon, mm. it tastes good. Head over to Charlie's website, charliebacon.com, to check out all the great flavors he has, including the bacon vault, everything he's ever made there. If it's not currently available, give him the heads up, and about two weeks later, he'll make it for you. You can buy some awesome merch, beanies, hats, T-shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, some of the best flavors out there that include the maple pepper, the chorizo, the French toasts, the Cajun, the Maui Waui, bacon jam comes in original bourbon, mango habanero, cherry jalapeno, which is absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. And starting now, you can save 10% on your order at charliethebaconguy.com. When you use the code CHGO at checkout, you could pick it up or he could deliver it to you, meet halfway, or even ship it, whatever is easiest. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home, charliethebaconguy.com. Go there. Do that. Send and some to Kevin Korczynski. Yeah. Bulk them up. Keep some of that extra fat bacon it's, it's for him, Charlie. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's good for you. And, uh, you know, the first thing I did when this game ended was I filled up my nice aluminum Coors Light cup with some nice cold Coors Light because uh, that was a tough one to watch. Yeah. It had its good moments. But it was tough to watch for the vast majority of it. And when you need to chill and take the stress off, Coors Light is the beer. I grab it's the beer. You should grab it's the beer. We all grab here at CHGO Blackhawks. It is the perfect cold refreshment to chill you out, especially during a Hawks game, win or lose. When the mountains turn blue, that means your Coors Light is as cold as the Rockies. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. When it's time to cold. chill, open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Golden, Colorado, this sounds like a place I want to go. It sounds there, magical. There are some interesting uh, city names in Colorado. If you if you search around, oh, yeah. Golden, Denver, <laughs> Boulder, Boulder, Golden, Boulder. Uh, there's a city called Rifle, Colorado. Oh, that's cool. There's hey, also a city West. called Gun, Colorado. I swear, there's a place called Gun, Gun, Colorado. Colorado. Gun. I'm looking at all of them. Yeah. Gun, rifle, they're right next to each other. And yeah, right. Tonito, that one's fun. Ariba. Oh, that's fun. Ariba, Ariba. Yeah. That's fun. Is that where Tito Santana was from? He used to say that. There's a Blackhawk, Colorado. Yeah. That's confusing. Not surprised. I like that. 
I'm going some, through all some, these. Some fun, fun, fun town names. Well, no, in, I'm, sh- in I'm sure there's a lot of those in those western uh, states. Mm-hmm. Color, uh, South Dakota and North Dakota probably have some funky names. Cokedale. Oh, yeah. uh, Cokedale. That was <laughs> Howard Chuck. <laughs> 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 named after a hockey player named Dale. Well, Coke take Dale. your pick. Take your uh, pick. Yeah. Yeah. That's Coke Colorado Dale. was cool. I just, we went to Denver to visit our DNVR guys, and I was like, this is not what I imagined Colorado to be. I yeah. thought it was going to be like, you know, pine trees and mountains and stuff. And it was John like, Denver was really full of shit. Yes, he was. It's a lot of rock lawns. Well, we learned that Denver is elevated a desert. desert. Just yep. an it's elevated desert. Yeah. 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 Weird. My my favorite thing about Colorado, <clears throat> and I don't know if this is going to say something about me, but have you ever Probably. seen the, ne- it's the, going to. The Broncos? Have you ever seen, the, no, the Denver Broncos? No. <laughs> have you ever seen the Netflix documentary Tread? No. Tread, no. I he didn't kill it. anybody, it but he shoes. built a tank. He had enough of everyone in his town, the the, the people that pop the politics of the town. So he built a tank and then ran over all the buildings in the town. But he didn't kill anybody. Oh, is this Killdozer? It's called Tread in on Netflix. Okay, well, there's a true it's story fan. about the. Yeah, Killdozer. it's the same guy. It's the same guy. All right. It's, I like this guy. That's, that's, yeah, I want to hang out with this guy. It's totally one of those. You like, don't want to hang out with this hell guy. Hell yeah, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who he hasn't he wanted? He didn't kill anybody. He just he, ran over he, a couple he literally of built. He literally built a scrap, like a tank of scrap. <laughs> it's and incredible. And intended to kill a bunch of people with it. But he didn't. Uh, he did not. It's okay. But uh, yeah. Who hasn't wanted to build their own tank and just run it through City Hall? I've wanted to, but I didn't well, actually <laughs> do it. <laughs> and the funniest part Who about whole- this guy for... <laughs> Having the <laughs> the funniest part is the tank was moving like less than a mile per hour, and people were like, "What do we do? Just walk the other it's like, way." Yeah, like, it's like yeah. the steamroller guy it's in Austin yeah, Powers. Austin Powers. Yeah. No, <laughs> he's like, "Just move." Yeah, Marvin Hemeyer is his name. There's oh, people God. calling him a legend in the chat. No, I mean he it's... is a mentally ill potential multi murderer. Well, Absolutely it sounds not. perfect for a Netflix documentary. It usually gets you elected to some sort of government. Well, Colorado <laughs> is the home of militias, so maybe he fits right in. Interesting. That guy's yes. my hero. He, well. there's, he should not, again, the guy <laughs> who intended to end many lives should not be your hero. Oh, oh my lord! Oh, Steven's in the chat. We can't talk. Oh, about I learned, get serious. Get serious. Yeah, I learned. So I learned something new today. Then, <laughs> yeah, the Killdozer. Yeah, uh, it's a lot. I Tread is the name of the documentary, though. I'll Tread? check that out. I'm, I'm, gonna, watch I'm that. definitely gonna watch that. That sort of when I'm not consuming hockey, it is true crime twenty four seven. Yeah, like I love that sort of stuff. Um, Very interesting. All right. Well, why don't we? Uh, we got our segments to pay off, Greg. Why don't we save? Who's your not? Who's your hawk? Why don't we save? Uh, for star for last because we still want the votes to come in so if you haven't gotten your vote in do so and while you're on that youtube page you might as well smash that like button Mm -hmm. it's only 74 likes that's insulting it's after midnight we're here working hard we're smiling we're giving it our all smash the like button for us we'd appreciate that why don't we go into connor's corner right now are you ready let's do it All right, Connor Bedard ended this game with an assist. He's got a Capri Sun. One shot on goal, nine shot attempts, and 2034 of ice time. Is that Capri Sun new? Yeah, that, I haven't I haven't noticed that before. Steven, Steven added you dog. Yeah. It was underneath that laundry pile the whole yeah. time. <laughs> it's an old Capri Some chicken Sun. nuggies. <laughs> yeah, those chi- they got Dino chicken nuggies. Oh yeah, he cleaned up his laundry. Yeah, yeah he laundry up his laundry. Laundry. Man, I have not been paying attention to the, the graphic in uh, It all grows up. He is. All grows those up. those He's dino his chores done. Those dino nuggies have been there for a while. You may want to Yeah, those Yeah. I wouldn't eat those. They those pro- things they don't uh, they don't go bad though. Those things have been well, after you cook them. They just reform. Those things have been there since the Jurassic period. You may <laughs> want to get some fresh ones. By the way, I want to I want to backtrack. Uh, Zist X I S T in the chat is the one who was talking uh, about Seth Jones earlier, and this is a new face in the chat. I was a little bit of a dick to you. I apologize, but I just you have to understand that we do five of these a week, and we just hear how bad the Seth Jones thing is all the time, and it's it's frustrating because he's just not. People don't love his contract. People don't love that he's here for as long as he's here. People don't love that they traded a first-round pick to get him. So we hear it a lot. But just we challenge you, if you're a new hockey fan, to look beyond what the hockey nerds with all the stat graphs are telling you and, you know, watch watch the game and see how he goes. Yes. That's the, all. The, the blanket statements just every once in a while they... He says he's good to go. He says, I don't mind with a heart emojis. So. All right. Welcome all to the chat, Zist. 
All right. Uh, yeah, Connor Bedard. Um, I have no problem with his game tonight. I know he missed the net a bunch, uh, do, but like, do, I, no, I mean, listen, I, I, overall, fine. Yeah, he's great. He's dynamic, but nine shot attempts, maybe get more than one on the net. Just saying. I feel like they took one away. Didn't on they? Net? I thought they didn't they uh, take a shot away. I, it, I, there was because the there was one. He had one like in the early second period, and by the third of the period, by the third period, it was gone. Yeah, on the event summary. Yeah, but still nine attempts, only one on net. Yeah, like, I, I mean, need I, I need some more shots on the net. Yeah, right? uh, the the entire team needed more on that. If you have sixty two attempts, more than uh, half of those should be getting yeah, through. They, but but they, I think I, I think there is something to be said for the Kings. Who consistently in their in their history and, and, and we remember this from the the twenty tens and whatnot, they are a team that and I know only two of those guys are still around, um, but that is a team that a lot of the identity is playing that like big physical heavy hockey and part of that is defensively being physical and using your body to you know make uh, make plays to stop teams offensively so I, th- I think there is something to be said for this Kings team being able to block a lot of the the shots uh, today whether it's with their their bodies getting their their you know getting themselves in the way or getting sticks in the lane tying up tying up sticks as guys are shooting like they did a really good job of yeah. doing that so it's not necessarily just like Bedard's just zinging pucks left and right and 20 feet wide like I think there there there's a lot to them focusing on him, shutting him down, and, be, and making sure they're taking away opportunities for him to get to the puck. Well, they were talking the about that even um, Troy Murray was talking about it on the power play. Everything was on the right wing boards because the Kings were just taking Bedard away yeah. on the power. Like, no, the other four of you boners can try to beat mm-hmm. us here because we're not letting 98 well, did beat once. Us. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, that was just the, the Kings just bat, flat out said, yeah, he can beat us. We don't believe the rest of you can. If you get one, good for you. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's a whole, you know, and the other thing too with Bedard, by the way, with missing is he's got the ability to pick a spot, right? Like he's trying to hit corners. He's trying to be, like, be precise with his shots and he mm-hmm. can. It's different from just like, like you said, he's not like Duncan Keith just like blasting from the point and going boom off the, yeah, off right. the end boards, you know, because yeah. he just missed it by five or six feet. So you're going to have those games. But I think you, I, I think your point is correct where, I give a lot of credit for a lot of Bedard's missed shots to the Kings mm-hmm. because they were, like we said, Making blocking shots and just taking away good angles from yeah. them. Yeah, Bedard, I mean, it's it's the old adage, aim small, miss small. Like, if he's going for that that pinpoint spot, he may not hit it, and it may just go right over the crossbar, but the next time he goes for that spot, he's going he's gonna to hit it. So it's, you know, as long as it gets through. Um but he's got that ability to, you know, go for the go for those small percentage shots because he can actually make them work. Yeah, he had the one shot on goal. He had three shots blocked, and he had five missed shots. Yeah, yeah. So they got too many. Yeah. Well, if the one goes Why in do the you net, hate Connor Bedard. Yeah, because his plus minus is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. He sucks. <laughs> um, we should talk about Lucas Reichel. We have not in this, this game. This is now a Brock Faber podcast. Uh, 1401 for Reichel, oh minus God. two. Had one shot, two shot attempts, and a takeaway. First period, busted his ass to get into the defensive zone, yeah. lifted a stick, and took a puck away. That's a legit takeaway. Other than that, didn't notice much of Lucas Reichel in this one. No, and I, I, I think this is a game where... You know, it's uh, we talk about the 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 Kings being tough to play against, being a bigger physical team. I think that is something that can neutralize uh, Lucas Reichel in this point in his career, and that's something that you know we mentioned to him when we were talking about Kevin Korczynski needing to do something to uh, address his physical stature. And, and I think Reichel is is a guy that since he's been drafted since he's come over to North America and played with Rockford and, and in Chicago, he has gotten bigger. The story this, this off season was about him adding, what was it like 15 pounds or something yeah. like that between uh, last season and this season. So like he's, they are focusing on those things. Um, but I would just, I, w- I would love to make, sh- I would love to see that 
you know, guys like him and, and, and Korczynski and, and, and the young guys as they develop in their game, they're also developing physically, and this is not going to be a team that can be pushed around when you're expecting them con- to contend because teams like the Kings and, and the Golden Knights and, like, teams that build with guys with size – are the ones that maybe you're not as fast. Maybe they're not as fast as you. Maybe they're not as skilled for you pound for pound, but they can push you around and not let you get to the center. That's going to neutralize a lot of guys. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it wasn't a good night for that line as a whole. Eleven oh four of uh, five on five ice time for Reichel and Athens C.U. Felino. Just six shot attempts for versus 10 against. For a 37.5 Corsi 4 percentage. Second lowest amongst the four lines. Uh, The only line worse was the fourth line. Slagger, Donato, Radish. Three attempts for 10 against, but that was also in three minutes less of ice time. Um, The other two lines, the top line, the Bedard line, in 1337 had 17 shot attempts, four to 10 against. And then the Colin Blackwell, Jason Dixon, whoa, Joey Anderson whoa, line, 855 whoa. of five on five ice time, 11 shot attempts for seven against. So, Not bad. yeah, that, that whole line, the whole second line just wasn't as effective as they were the last game. But a lot of that has to do, again, with the opponent. The opponent. Yep. You know, if you're out and there. especially the Kings. If you're out there against Philip Deneau and Trevor Moore and Kevin Fiala most of the night, you're probably – Going to have to play a lot of defense. Yep. Yeah, just just like the games that uh, came before and after the Kings game at home, I think these next two games that they play are going to look different than the game tonight. I would hope so. The Ducks and the Sharks, two teams you've recently beat, mm-hmm. two teams that are equally lousy at hockey. Uh, though I think is Leo Carlson. Leo back? Carlson didn't play in the game. Um, when the Ducks were here in town, but I, I thought I'm I not saw sure if he's he, I back. I thought I saw he yet. was either back already or very close. Speaking of the Ducks, coming back, shut out tonight four nothing against the Wild, and the Sharks were shellacked eight two against the Predators. The Red Hot Predators. Yeah, thirteen zero and two their last fifteen. That's crazy. It That's like, nuts. <laughs> it, looked, it looked like uh, Alex Turcotte got hurt again tonight. What? <gasps> He was in Shocking. the penalty box late in the game. Yeah. Got a took a hit from Taylor Radish. Mm. Uh and looks like he got hurt a little bit, but that sucks. But I think he came back, so I don't know. I don't know. Him and his tinted visor can go scratch. <laughs> just yeah, he's he's off. got too much swag for a I, guy who's I, not done anything in his I, career. I, I, see, these are like the times where I just get so <laughs> irrational. Like there's no reason to hate on a kid. But I saw his tinted visor. And his hair sticking. I was like, oh, my God. I want to punch this kid in the face. Yeah, there, he's got... An, Anze he, Kopitar could wear the tinted visor. He, he looks like a no. like an Eshel player with just, like, he, he, got, he paid All for black. every accessory. He's got the neck guard on, which good for him wearing yeah. the neck guard. They also be wearing the neck guards. But just look like, yeah. <laughs> look like one of the kids from the Hawks from Mighty Ducks. Yes. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yes. the, the, yes. the evil. Yeah. The evil Hawks. Oh, bastards. That's what, that's, <laughs> I think it triggered... That yeah, I think yeah. That mm-hmm. that now that you mention that he did look like that. That's yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, you don't get the uh, reflective, uh, darkened, tinted visor until you do something. Mm-hmm. Ovechkin, Hosa, okay. Yeah, Kopitar, okay. A lot of the I, I said it to you guys during the game though. A lot, I feel like a lot of the Kings players wear the tinted visor. I don't know if it's if it's like a like some sort of advantage they have. I don't know. Maybe there's it, weird lighting in the eye. There yeah. might be, yeah, the crypto. In case the Lakers lights come on, they got to have their sunglasses <laughs> crypto on. Crypto wank arena or whatever it's Correct. called. Um, we'll be bankrupt next week, yeah, arena. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I know, I think, uh, well, I think Kempe has one. Kopitar has one. Turcotte, cup, I think. Cup. Uh, no cup. Um <laughs> Uh, Arvidsson, when he's, I know he didn't play tonight, but I think he that wears one dead. too. He's he's on the injured Future report. Future Blackhawk Victor Arvidsson. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. I like him. He's a good player. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird, weird thing that you notice when you're getting beat 6-2. Yeah, I mean, I can't, like, yell at them for much, but, like, just stop being stupid looking. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Nice. Change your face. All right, yeah. let's do uh, let's do who's your hawk bothering me, and then do four star. Let's get out of here. Sure, Greg, you got the who's your hawk winner, Greg Braggs. I wonder who it was. Mm. Right. It's the person totally that already has the helmet. On. 
It was me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe having it right next to the backwards. entire show. It feels no, backwards. No. Maybe your, my head got your, bigger. Your I think your head got bigger. <laughs> gained some weight. My doctor yelled at me this morning. Um, <laughs> Seth Jones, he is the winner of Who's Your Hawk. No, but he's bad. He's bad, though. Despite being a horrible <laughs> player. He had the biggest blue line Congrats. of the guys we picked. So Congratulations. Is that my 23rd win? That is 23. Sweet. MJ. Me and Greg are catching. We get our our lead is getting bigger and bigger by the day. Yeah, sure. Mostly, bigger and bigger mostly by the day. because of you. Sure. <laughs> and uh, before we get to the I four star of the game, game, we want to send a little shout out to our buddy uh, Pete Blackburn from What Chaos. He was on with our uh, friends at PHNX, and they had a little conversation about Connor Bedard. Mm. Let's fire me. this up real quick before we get to the four star. I want to read you the stat, and I, I don't want to say that I'm like a plus minus believer. Oh no, I know. I'm not. I'm not. I was <laughs> plus minus. Before you even started this stat. point, before you even started this point, I was going to bring up once you stop talking, the people that talk about Connor Bedard's plus minus <laughs> can go to hell. Go <laughs> to hell. Nobody gives a shit about Connor Bedard's plus minus in his first year with the Chicago Blackhawks, who are icing an AHL team. They Obviously. Are. They're going to give up a lot of goals. And obviously, Connor Bedard has not been great defensively. He needs to work on that part of his game. But Connor Bedard's offensive production has been insane. And it doesn't matter. The defensive game will come with time. Would it you, go ahead, you? read your numbers. Would it matter? <laughs> read your numbers. Shout out to Pete. And by the way, before you nod affirmatively Pete's, there, Craig, Pete's, that yes, they are an AHL team. Pete's they put 14 goals on your asses in the last two yeah. games. So your let's ass. not nod too let's they, not nod too confidently here. They, they they forced you to bench Clayton Keller, your best player. Yes. Ass. So yes. And and by the way, guys, public service announcement. Don't go into PHNX's chat and be dicks. Yeah, literally. Or their Twitter or anything. Yeah, don't do yes, that. they are friends of ours. Sure. Like literal friends. They they do things that annoy us at times, but I'm sure they can say the same thing about us. But like Petey, Craig, Leah, I consider them like legit friends of mine. They're great colleagues. We all work for the same company. Yeah. So if you go shit on them, it's basically like taking a poop in our chat too. Yeah. It's, it's a bad look for the company. Don't poop in our chat. Yeah, don't poop in anybody's chat. Except maybe Joe Rogan's. Don't crap where you eat. Exactly. Yeah. Save that nonsense for Pat McAfee. Don't, don't do it here. Just leave the the PHNX people alone. You can go give them, you can go give them some good natured ribbon and have some fun with them. But don't don't go over to their chat and be jerks. Yeah, it's it's not a good look f for us. It embarrasses us. Yeah, because you're our people. Let's act like we've been there before. Because guess what? We yes, have. we claim responsibility for all of you lovely people. So when you do that, it reflects poorly on us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, we have our four star winner. Let's fire up. I don't know who it is. I'm, I'm going to be surprised, too. The suspense is killing me. Greg, tell me. It's 1230. It's, that's it's not bad. It's, it's definitely not it's him. It's not Arvid Soderblom. No. It's, it's definitely not Arvid Soderblom. Not Arvid Soderblom. Soderblom. There it is. Hey, <laughs> hey. it's Philip Kershev. Philip Kirsch. Or, or how is it spelled in the chat? Kershev. Kershev. Philip Kershev is your four-star of the game. Kershev. Recapping his numbers, two assists, a shot on goal, three shot attempts. Picked up his 29th and 30th assists of the season, so congrats to him. He continues Kershev. his excellent season. All right. Does it say Kershev in the in chat? The chat, yeah. Uh. In, the, in the poll, it's Kershev. Oh, nice. I like that. Shea Kershev. Let's just change it. It's his new nickname. It's more yeah. convenient. What was it? Wait, what was it? Um... Was it the at the All Star game? Who uh, Connor uh, Connor McDavid called somebody by the wrong name? It was a goalie. Who was it? I don't I know that. Remember. I didn't see that. I missed that <laughs> one. It was a thing. Did he called Stuart Skinner by the wrong. No, name? he called. I'm on your team, dude. He called a <laughs> he called a goal when they were picking teams. He called the goalie the wrong name. Oh, he said Sam Bobrovsky. That's what it oh, was. Oh. We were like, sorry, you're Sam Bobrovsky now. <laughs> yeah, okay, I do yeah. remember that. Well, Once McDavid changes your name, it sticks. You're Philip Kershaw. Sam's now. a lot easier to say than Sergey. Sure, yeah, but Sergey's exactly. not that hard. No. It's also Bobrovsky, like, doesn't it win? There's an old bit from a one of your, your past lifetime I could have chimed in there, but I, I I won't. Thank you. That's not I appreciate ours. that. All See, right. we don't steal other people's bits on this show. When we do, we not acknowledge it. Like a like spike, which we're going to do right now. 
Three, two, one. On spike that like out. button for us. We've got too many more people watching than likes, and that's not good. Yes. So do it. Uh, while you're doing that, we're going to tell you tomorrow we're back at 2.30, Ugh. so we might as well sleep here. <laughs> um, we're going to finish off the mailbag. We had yeah. a ton of questions come in Monday. We handled all of our diehards, so now we're going to get to all the Twitter folks, and there were a lot of good questions in there. Mm-hmm. So don't miss tomorrow's show. 2.30, mailbag Wednesday. Not quite as uh, catchy, but... Just as fun and just as easy for us. Yes. We appreciate that. Yes. All right. We're going to wrap so things up. Thanks to uh, Greg tomorrow. for running the show. You're and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow <laughs> at 2.30 on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We all silly like the mayor. 